Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place as you listen to The Bright Side every day. You are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health issue. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 33 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we are here for you on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We love hearing from you. We'll take your, uh, we'll take your questions in our second segment. We've got a guest coming up at the bottom of the hour, Robin Graziati. He's a motivational speaker and a management consultant, and she's going to be speaking about her book, Instinctology. I met Robin, oh, probably four or five months ago, and I said, you got to get on my radio program. There's... Uh, lots of good, there's lots of good stuff that you have to say, and there's lots of people you could help. Her book, Instinctology, A Leadership Method to Turn Instincts into Action. And we'll talk to Robin in the bottom of the hour. We'll take your phone calls next segment, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you want to purchase Longevity products, go to Break sideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470. Ask about joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $30 fee. You can be in business for yourself and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. I will actually be doing a talk now that I think about it for uh, my good friend Tom Chenault. This Saturday, if you're in the Longmont area at the church, I don't remember the address of the church, but... Uh, I'll, I'll get that for you in our next segment or, or, or sometime before Saturday. If you're in the Longmont area, I'd love to see you at a super Saturday. I've been working with Longevity now for over 20 years. Hard to believe. And in that time, I have seen the most incredible turnarounds when it comes to health. And that's what happens when you get on a good nutritional supplement program, particularly if you've never supplemented before, and that is most people. And if you want to be in business helping people, Get on a good nutritional supplement program. The longevity business is something you want to look into. Please call 866-735-2470 for more information or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget to take a look at our shopping products at truthnourishment.com, our enzymes and probiotics and various protein powders and herbal extracts. Thank you to Robert Lundgren for setting that up and also Truth treatments.com for truth skin health products never any preservatives fragrances fillers waxes emulsifiers water nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our truth formulations they're not medical grade they're medicine they're formulated like medicine and you use them like medicine and that's one of the things i discovered in formulating products in my wound healing pharmacy is that healing the skin and beautifying the skin are the same mechanisms. Truth treatments heal and beautify all at the same time. Check them all out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We have been talking about fibromyalgia and diagnoses and most recently about estrogen. Estrogen is this very misunderstood hormone or actually family of uh, hormones, family of molecules, really. There's estrogens everywhere in nature. It's the oldest of the hormones. It is a uh, signaling molecule. That's what hormones do. They signal. Cells talk to each other, and then instead of words, they use signals, codes. Estrogen is a code that says, let's get moving. 
it is a it's a rev rev up the cell code it it stimulates things and makes things happen and too much of it or if it's not detoxified or cleared out of the body appropriately all that stimulation can lead to tissue decay tissue breakdown cancer pain inflammation there is there's really uh, I would say there's not very many inflammatory chronic long-term diseases that don't have some kind of element of estrogen metabolism gone haywire or estrogen that's not getting cleared out properly, properly, some estrogenic component. And we're subjected to estrogens everywhere. Given the this incredible potency of this molecule and the fact that there are many plastics and, and textiles and chemicals that are synthetic and manufactured that have estrogenic properties that are in our environment, in our water, in our air, it really... Fit our autoimmune epidemic and our, our chronic disease epidemic and our inflammatory epidemic, I'm not going to say it's caused only by excess estrogen or xenoestrogens. Foreign, xeno means foreign. Xenoestrogens are estrogens that aren't getting cleared out of the body, but it's got to have a, it's got to have a, a there's, it's got to play a role. Xenoestrogens and estrogen metabolism has to play a role. Not, I'm not going to say it's the only cause, but it has to play a role in inflammation and inflammatory diseases. And that's for men and women, uh, prostate cancer and BPH, benign prostatic hypertrophy is thought to have an estrogenic component in men. Estrogen's made in fat cells. It's not just made in, female re in the female reproductive system. It's got effects on male cells as, as it does on female cells. And it has, uh, no matter what the, your gender, it has a revving up effect. And this is important for women for growing a fetus, obviously. But... Uh, when estrogen balance is thrown off by xenoestrogens or incomplete elimination, liver problems, gallbladder problems, and by the way, if you've had a gallbladder missing, you're at higher risk, or if you had a gallbladder taken out, I should say, you're at higher risk for all of these estrogenic problems because bile and the gallbladder play a very important role in getting rid of estrogen, as does the intestine. And the liver and all the components in the liver and things like vitamin C and selenium and uh, sulfur and the amino acid glycine and something called calcium deglucurate. These are all, and uh, com, uh, phytonutrients that are in cruciferous vegetables. These all play a role in the detoxification of estrogen at the level of the liver. This is why broccoli is so important. If I was a woman, I'd be eating broccoli every day, cauliflower every day, cruciferous vegetables every day. They're the most medicinal vegetables anyway. Not sometimes people react to them, so you got to be a little bit careful. But as far as uh, clearing out estrogen, they are the most medicinal, detoxifying of all the veggies, the cruciferous veggies. If you're on HRT, hormone replacement therapy, you're playing with fire. Once you understand what estrogen really does, you'll understand you're playing with fire if you're on HRT. Same with the birth control pill. In fact, the birth control pill, I understand the convenience of it, obviously, but it is a seriously problematic pharmaceutical and biochemical strategy for health or for, or for lifestyle. Sometimes they give it to you for health. That's really ridiculous when they give it to you for endometriosis. The birth control pill gives you a huge amount of estrogen, essentially shutting down growth, essentially keeping you from getting pregnant. That's how the birth control pill works. It just swamps you with estrogen. It throws off the entire estrogen Progest estrogen other hormone balance with not just estrogen but with fake estrogen with synthetic estrogen with an estrogen that is not recognized by the body it is an awful pill awful uh, pharmaceutical the birth control pill estrogen in general has a stimulating as I say rev you up effect on the cells that means it makes cells burn through energy remember it's all really everything we're talking about here is about energy Nutrients work because of energy, food works because of energy, exercise works because of energy, breathing works because of energy, we get sick because of energy, we're healthy because of energy. It's all really all about energy. Energy and life and health all go together. Estrogen increases the energy demands of a cell. It puts a major burden on the cell by revving it up and increasing its energy demand. So if you already have a, a, a starving cell and now you put more energy demand on the cell, you may get a temporary bump in, uh, in production or in, in effect from the cell, but in the long run, you're going to burn the cell out. You're going to break the cell. You very likely will cause the genetics to change, and this is where cancers come from. 
It's really playing with fire to rev up the cell pharmaceutically, in my opinion. All right, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. the bright side 844-236-6010 is our number we'll get your calls momentarily We've got robin graziade coming up talking about her book instinctology at the bottom of the hour and we'll take your calls this segment 844-236-6010 uh just a couple of real quick studies from the european journal of nutrition this is about vitamin c and athletic performance and i think it's really important I'll tell you why here in a second uh, plasma vitamin C levels were measured in 100 healthy males compared to compared with the 10 subjects with the highest levels. The 10 subjects with the lowest levels had a significantly lower VO2 max. That's respiratory function. Vitamin C is well known as an antioxidant. Vitamin C is well known uh, as a, uh, a skin an ingredient in skincare products for helping stimulate the production of collagen and connective tissue. But what's not so well known is the fact that vitamin C is a stress management molecule. It helps the body utilize stress and turn stress into energy, turn stress into something positive. Stress, when it's, uh, when it's not taken advantage of or when it's used, when stress is... Uh, is uh, is present without the context of nutrition and nutritional value or nutritional uh, nutritional components that's when a cell burns out that is if you have vitamin c present when you're stressing you can actually use that stress for growth not just vitamin c but vitamin c is one of the most important of the stress management molecules the b complex is also very important for stress management in fact all of the nutrients in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine are really, or a lot of the nutrients, I should say, are really stress management nutrients because the stress management system tends to be in the water, at least in the short, the short-term stress management system tends to be in the water phase, that is water-soluble vitamins and water-soluble minerals, electrolytes. Those are your stress management in the short term, your stress management electrical uh, dampening uh, nutrients. So vitamin C for stress, the B-complex for stress, electrolytes for stress. Those are all found in the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which might as well be called a stress management powder for all of the stress management nutrients that are in it. Are in it. Speaking of the B vitamins, this uh, quickie uh, from the Journal of uh, Alternative Complementary Medicine, thiamine for Parkinson's disease. Thiamine is being used to treat neural problems. Thiamine also can be used to treat cardiovascular problems. Thiamine is a, um, a sugar metabolizing nutrient that may also be helpful for attention deficit disorder in children. Thiamine deficiency will lead to confusion and delirium and something called Werner Korsakoff syndrome, which uh, alcoholics suffer from, which is, um, which is uh, basically hallucinations and delirium uh, and uh, just general delirium, deterioration of brain tissue. I wonder if Alzheimer's disease may, uh, may involve thiamine deficiency, or maybe thiamine could be used for Alzheimer's disease patients. I wouldn't be surprised if you find that thiamine, vitamin B1 can help uh, folks who are dealing with dementia. And guess what? Beyond Tangy Tangerine is loaded with thiamine too. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Let's say good morning to Chris in Texas. What's up, Chris? Hi, Ben. Hey, Listen, is going? there a simple blood test that you can take to find out if you have a diagnosis for certain kinds of cancers, like, say, pancreatic cancer, for instance? Uh, yeah, they can do tests for that, absolutely. They, it, they can also do DNA, DNA tests, I suppose, too. Um, yeah, but why, what are you thinking? You want to be tested? You know somebody wants to be tested, or you want to be tested? Well, I, I suspect that uh, I may be a candidate for a diagnosis of pancreatic cancer. Now, I know a uh, diagnosis is not necessarily a death sentence. No, but... it's not. A uh, diagnosis of, of, bre- of, I don't know if you would do a blood test, but they can definitely do like a, a ultrasound or, you know, a CT scan kind of thing, PET scans, MRIs. Well, I, I think getting, what, CT scan, that's a lot of radiation, right? Um, you know, if you want to know if you have pancreatic cancer, ultra, you can do ultrasound. <laughs> the, the, the thing is, you know, I, 
I may have had cancer for years and don't even know it. And, that's right. Cancers have... come and go. Cancers come and go, and uh, that's very important for people to recognize. And if you do have, if you do have a, a diagnosis of any kind of cancer, it doesn't necessarily have to be a death sentence. You got to treat yourself. You just got to make sure you're healthy. Now, if you have pain, you know, if you have nausea, invo- pancreatic. The symptoms of pancreatic cancer usually involve digestive symptoms, appetite. Exactly. That, that's that's why I'm scared. Oh, wait, nausea. Are you nausea, nauseous a lot, vomiting a lot? Any? I I was. And uh, do you have pain? Do it. you have pain in your belly? in your back? Yeah, like I almost had to have my gallbladder removed. This happened five years ago. Uh, do you have a little bit more time? Uh, real quick, I want to get a couple, a couple more calls in, but go ahead. Okay, the proof is is that in 2014, I was in Pueblo, Colorado, yeah, and, and I had uh, a little bit of spare money, and I used it to buy cannabis, but here's the deal. I, I ate a horrible diet. Awful. I was eating TV dinners, the worst okay. processed foods, no, right. no supplements, and I thought that cannabis would be the panacea, and it wasn't. I, I, I almost had to have emergency gallbladder surgery in Pueblo, and this is when I was doing cannabis. Now I've, I've been off cannabis for three years, and it, you know life is not fun anymore. I get depressed a lot, but. Um, I don't have the same symptoms I had before because I changed my diet. I got rid of sugar. Uh, I'm pretty much on the ketogenic diet now. Good for you. So, so you're doing good. So, so it makes you know it makes a difference. I, I mean, look, it doesn't matter what supplements you take. Doesn't matter how much weed you smoke. If uh, you cannot out supplement a bad diet, period. You can't. That's exactly right. You cannot out supplement a bad diet. Although the worse your diet is, the more you need supplements. So. Uh, yeah, you're, it's like it's like it's like having a hole in your boat and you're bailing water. The supplements will keep you afloat, like they'll help you bail water. But if you have a hole in the boat from a crappy diet, you're not going to go anywhere. You might not sink because the supplements will keep you in the game, but you aren't going to go very far. Chris, I want to get one more call in before we get to our guest at the bottom of the hour. Thanks, I appreciate your input always, Chris. And Aria, you're going to get the last word. We got Robin Graziade coming in at the bottom of the hour talking about her book Instinctology. What's up, Ria? Hi, pharmacist Ben. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Um, I have a question about supplements that I'm taking at the moment. Okay. Um, I am treating my body as I have, as if I have leaky gut. Yeah, how's your I skin doing? All the supp- a lot, but it, it's much better. I've got like one dark spot on my forehead, but everything nice. else is. What'd you come up with? Great. You were you were like I'm not I'm doing everything right. Could it be could it be the air? Could it be the chair yeah, I'm sitting you're on? You're like you're still gonna laugh because the only thing I've stopped taking is coffee and pork. So everything okay. else, I'm still. And your skin's it. cleared up a lot so, when you quit the coffee and the pork. Yes, yes. Okay, a that's lot. very like, interesting. I'm yeah, coffee coffee person. could be a problem that a lot of folks don't realize. And I feel much better, so maybe it was taking a toll on me. I guess. What's that? I, I feel much better quitting coffee, so that's well. Good thing. for you. That's you know, coffee, that's coffee that's beans, which they're not really beans; mm-hmm. they're seeds, um, can have like all seeds. They can create problems. They got those lectins in them, mm-hmm. and they can definitely create problems. Well, good. Anything else? Is, Any, I, yeah. What's your question? Yeah, I still feel like I have maybe I have like those leaky gut uh, symptoms. Can you can eat I gelatin? All the supplements. Can you do gelatin? Yes, I take do gelatin. Broth. Every day? Yeah, bone broth is good, but add some gelatin to it. Add some gelatin to the bone broth. My question is... Yeah? Can you take my question? We got to ask real quick. We're running out of time. Actually, you know we're going to be out of time here. I apologize. You've got to call back because we're just out of time. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back uh, with with, uh, uh, Robin Graziati right after this. On the bright side, thanks for listening. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time and 24-7 on the archive page at brightsideben.com. You'll find longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. We've got videos and news stories and blog posts at all 
our sites and to join the team now link that you can click on if you want to join the Brightside Ben team, or you can call 866-735-2470. If you'd like to speak to a real human being, also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com and our Truth Nutritional products at truthnourishment.com, truthnourishment.com for shopping products, enzymes, and protein powders, and probiotics, etc. Thank you to Robert Lundgren for setting that up. We also have a blog at truthnourishment.com. And then our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Also have a skin health blog there, truthtreatments.com. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, nothing our skin, your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. All right. I am very excited to have our next guest on, Robin Graziade. I think I said that right. Is the founder and president of Net Results. She's a speaker, motivational speaker, and she is also the author of a very cool book called Instinctology, a leadership method to turn your gut instincts, your G-U-T, gut instincts, into concrete action. It's just volume one. I met Robin um, probably four months ago, four or five months ago at the Landmark Wisdom Course. If you haven't done Landmark or you don't know anything about Landmark, it's one of the best personal development programs you'll ever get into. I personally have been doing it since 1980, and my whole life has been built around Landmark principles. Those of you who've done Landmark know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, check it out, Landmark Forum. Anyway, I met Robin at the Landmark uh, Wisdom Course, and uh, she was kind enough to give me her book. I read it. It's a very easy read, very quick read, lots of good stuff in there. And I said, Robin, you got to come on the program. So please welcome to the bright side, Robin Graziade. Hello, Robin. Hello, Ben. How are you doing? I'm good. Did I say that right? Graziade? It's close enough. It's Gracia okay. Day, but you're pretty darn okay. close. Gra- Gracia Day. All right. I'm going to have to remember yes, that. Sir. Gracia Day. All right. So you are actually a public speaker for, uh, and you do time management, correct? Well, I'm a leadership consultant and speaker for the Franklin Covey Company. So then, is that uh, time the Franklin management? Covey Company focuses on leadership development. We teach uh-huh. a number of different courses, and time management is one of them. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's general leadership skills. They, they, you train people in leadership skills. Correct. I, gotcha. Executives, everyone from the mailroom to the boardroom. That's awesome. And you've come to realize that instinct plays a role in how leadership shows up, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. In T- fact, us- over the years, I've been in this business about 20 years, and I've worked with over 100, 100 uh captains of industry, C-suite executive leaders, and middle management, everyone from the mailroom to the boardroom. But I interviewed a number of the executive suite that I've worked with over the years, and I asked them, what's the one thing that you wish you had done differently in running your company? And a consistent theme came up, Ben, and the theme was, I wish I would have listened to my intuition more. Hmm. Then they started sharing with me story upon story upon story about it, what it cost leaders shared with me story upon story about what it cost them not to listen to their intuition. That is an amazingly important lesson there because I I feel, I feel in my life, I would say the same thing. There's so many times I I have heard a a still small voice. Is that what you're talking about? The still small voice when you hear it? It's our still small voice inside and we all have it. That's great. And we don't listen. And do you think that's like, we all have that in common. We also have not listening to it in common. Do you think? Yes, absolutely. What is that about? If it, we have a GPS, if you have a GPS in your car, it's look, kind of like not watching the GPS, right? Why would we not do yes. that? It's if you turn the GPS on in your car and it gives you directions and you intentionally ignore the GPS that says turn left on 7th Street and turn right on 8th Street, you intentionally ignore that and get lost. Or another good example is an airline pilot if they are off route just a, a millimeter, one millimeter off route, and they don't correct that, mm. their flight ends up 10, 20, 30 miles off route. Wow, so we, means- we end up off of our true destination, our true calling, by not really tuning into our own internal GPS, which is our intuition. So if we if we have an in, we all have an internal GPS, why would we not listen to it? I mean, why is it human nature to not listen to our internal GPS? 
That's an excellent question. And in my book, I talk about a number of reasons for that. And in my keynotes, I also share a number of reasons for that. One reason is that we are living in a world that uh, bombards us with constant external noise. Some people call that data, whether it's social media, television, uh, fake news, real news, uh, mounds and mounds and mounds of data that the executives I work with talked about receiving from their finance and accounting department and research team and IT, mounds of data. And we live in a world where we are just pressured and bombarded with all of this external noise. And so we need to make a conscious, intentional, concerted commitment to listening to our internal voice in the face of all of this external noise. I like to say that Let's not, I'm not telling executives, ignore the data that your research team brings you. I'm not telling people I work with one-on-one -on -one in instinctology, ignore external data. Uh, but, I'm, but I'm saying that think of your internal GPS, that still small voice inside of you, your intuition. Make sure you include that as a data point when you're making decisions. Don't completely ignore it. And the more that you do start to honor it, the more you do start to weave it into your decision-making process, the more empowered you will become and your life will go from just surviving or existing to absolute abundance and thriving. Is there a, is there a left brain, right brain correlation to what you're talking about? I think there is. I like to call instinctology using the whole brain. So our left brain really focuses on logic and reasoning and data, and our right brain focuses on creativity. But when you combine the left and the right brain, you're mm. using both, and that's really your intuition. I also believe that our intuition is the absolute highest form of intelligence mm -hmm. because you can, you can uh, unlike Alice in Wonderland, who just wandered around forever and fell down the rabbit hole, when you listen to your intuition, you can catapult your success because you are on a straight and narrow path being guided by that still small voice inside of you. It is, it, when you say instinct, are you using instinct and intuition synonymously? I, I am. Okay, so gotcha. So we all have our, our instincts and intuition, and so let me be very clear. Some people will say, well, you know, my immediate instincts were to do this or that, and it might harm someone. So that might be a person's immediate impulse, but if you don't act on the impulse and you take a moment to truly listen to your intuition or your instincts before you act on it, it's I, going to guide you into the best direction for yourself. In my book, I clearly hold, Robin, state- hold, hold, hold that, that thought, because we gotta take a commercial. Hold that thought, we'll, we'll complete. We're talking to Robin Graziade about her book, Instinctology. We'll be back right after this. Many okay, we are back on the Bright Side talking to Robin Graziade, motivational speaker and author of the book Instinctology, and before we went to break, Robin, we were talking about the difference between instinct and intuition, or what they have in common, or if they're synonymous, so I didn't mean to cut you off. Why don't you continue? No, no worries. Thank you, Ben. I believe that your instincts and intuition are synonymous, and we all have them. Our intuition is, it, instinctology, our intuition is just something that is. There's no right or wrong to it. There's no good or bad. It just is something that is, we all have it, just like the law of gravity, just like we need oxygen to breathe. We all have our intuition, and my mission is to help people be empowered by their intuition so that they can lead more productive and empowered lives. Whether a person's in a, an official leadership role with a leadership title, or simply a, a parent leading their family, or someone who's involved in the community leading a community, a community volunteer program. We're all leaders in some form, and we are more effective at leadership when we truly, when we lead and are empowered by our intuition. 
So could I just give you one example of a story sure. that a person in a recent keynote I gave shared with me? Sure. Uh, there was a gentleman in a keynote I gave recently at Colorado State University, and I, I asked for people to share stories in my keynotes and in my workshops. And the story he shared was that one day he and his wife were taking a road trip, and he just intuitively felt, he didn't know what to call it, intuition, instinct, still small voice. It doesn't really matter what we label it. We all have it. But he intuitively felt that his wife should change lanes while driving. And she argued with him and, and said, oh, stop telling me how to drive. He said, no, I'm telling you, change lanes. And he cha she changed lanes about, went over two or three lanes. And about 30 seconds after she did that, a large diesel truck in start of her in front of them slammed their brakes on, mm. twisted around, turned over, and would have literally run, rolled over their car and they would have all died. So he said, I absolutely believe in instinctology. I've never known what to call it, but I know that I have strong instincts. So his instincts protected he and his family. So instinctology, Ben, is just, it's simply giving a framework to this gift that we all have, our internal GPS, our intuition, our instincts, a still small voice, whatever a person needs to label it for themselves to feel comfortable with it so that they will tune into it and let it empower them, it's there and it will literally transform your life. We talk about a transformed life and landmark. If there's one thing that's transformed my life, it's been training myself to stop all of that external noise that's constantly coming at me, and we all have that, and tune that out and just truly, truly tune into my own internal voice. My life has transformed in the last five years as I've trained myself to do that, and I have story upon story upon story of other people's lives who have transformed as they have trained themselves to listen to their intuition. Okay, so i got a couple questions here. First okay. of all, how do you know if the if it's the still small voice or it's the noise, what if they sound the same? Is there, or do or do do they not sound the same? Is there a way you can distinguish between the two? Yes, the way you distinguish between the two is it doesn't. It's not noise. Uh, when I tune into my intuition, I have such a strong, deep internal calm, a peace mm. that passes all understanding. So, how you know the difference? is when you're really, truly tuned into your intuition, you're calm, you're confident, you're empowered. If there was anxiety before, it's gone. If there was fear before, it's gone. Intuition replaces all of the noise. So, the, so one is like scattered and chaotic and the other is calm and still. Is that a good distinction? Yes, exactly. Got it. Okay, now, and I definitely know what you're talking about because there is a certain stillness that's associated with that thing that you're calling intuition that isn't there with mm -hmm. the thoughts and the voice mm -hmm. and the inner dialogue. So now mm -hmm. the second thing he's talked about that was interesting to me is training. So you can actually train yourself, I imagine, based on what you mm -hmm. said, to, to be more in tune with this intuition, to listen to this intuition, to be able to distinguish it. Is that what you mean? And how do you do it? Yes. What does the training involve? Yes, you can train yourself to develop the muscle of listening to your intuition. I use an acronym in my workshop. The acronym is the word ACT. The letter A stands for acknowledge. If you don't acknowledge it, you can't choose it. The letter C stands for choose, so choosing to listen to it. And the letter T stands for turning it into action. So I... I teach people how to acknowledge that still small voice when they hear it and then pause and choose, intentionally choose to listen to it and then T, take what you've just listened to and turn it into action. Is that the hardest step? I hear a story with you on that. Is there time for a quick story? Yeah, time for a quick, but let, just real quick. Is that the hardest step, the last thing that you said? Yes. With the T? Mm -hmm. To 
to turn it into action. Okay, it yeah. seems to me like that would be the hardest hardest of the three uh, of the three steps. The last one would be the hardest. Uh, but go ahead, right. tell us your story. We've got a few minutes here, um, and then I want you to get out your website and let people know how they can get a hold of you. Okay, so yes, T, the last part is the hardest uh, step because you've got to trust it and turn it into action. And uh, before one has a lot of experience with doing that, it's doing something different. It's doing the opposite of what we've always done, which is listen to the noise and tune out the intuition and act on it. So the last step is the hardest because you've got to do the opposite of what you've been programmed and trained to do by society, which is to listen to the noise and dummy down your own internal voice. So very quick story. One morning, uh, one day I was speaking at a conference as I was leaving. The conference crowded, busy, cars on the street, people coming up to talk to me. Um, my still small voice inside said, get on a flight tomorrow morning to Kansas City. And I thought, that's weird. Why would I do that? But I've learned to trust my intuition. So I acknowledged the intuition. I chose to honor it. And then I turned it into action by making a reservation on the first flight to Kansas City the next morning. Long story short, my ex-husband, whom I had not seen in 25 years, was on that flight. Huh. The flight sat on the tarmac for three hours. We, he and I had a, about a four or five hour conversation between the delays oh, wow. and the flight time. And we cleaned up wow. everything that we had between us from 25 years ago. That wow. is an absolute miracle, Ben, that I would have missed if I didn't acknowledge my intuition, choose to honor it, and then turn it into action and get on a plane for no rhyme or reason, I had it made no logical sense to my left brain. My creative brain was like on fire and, and just lapping it up, but <laughs> it made no logical sense. And that's an example of an instinctology story that creates, that empowers us and creates miracles in our lives where our lives truly become transformed. And that's a massive amount of trust you had to have to do that, just to get on the. Mm -hmm. I mean, you must have you must have been very experienced with instinctology at that point. I don't know if I would have that much trust, just to get on a plane well, like that. But, yes. but that's what happens. That's and the that's, reward probably that you get when that's you trust. That's what happens over time as as you start building your instinctology muscle. Yes. Okay, so how do people, if they're interested, how do they get a hold of you? How do they get a hold of the book? The book's on Kindle and on Amazon, I imagine. Instinctology, correct? Yes. If anyone would like to contact me and learn more about Instinctology, simply go to my website, which is instinctology.com, and it's spelled instinct, the word instinct, and then O-L-O-G-Y, instinctology.com, and you can learn more about what Instinctology is, the work that I do to help people be empowered by their intuition, and you can email me through instinctology.com. And then do you do public presentations, or do you have YouTube? People can watch you, watch you in action, watch you speak? Currently, I've been on a speaking circuit and giving keynotes and two, two to three-hour workshops on Instinctology. Uh, my next step is to create some YouTubes and also to make the book in an audio format. That's very exciting. Book Instinctology, Robin Grazia Day. Did I say that right? Grazia Day? Yeah. I hope I said that right. And uh, thank you so much, Robin. I'm looking forward to seeing you again at our next Landmark uh, Wisdom course. Thank you. And thanks for the book. And thanks for being on the bright side, Robin. Take care. Talk thank, to you soon. Thank you for having me. Great. All right. That was Robin Grazia Day. Her book is Instinctology. It's a real easy read. It's a quick read. And there's lots of good information if you're interested in turning your instincts into action. It's a leadership method for turning gut instincts into concrete action. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. Warning.